G'day guys, how are you going? Today I'm going to talk to you about plyometrics. So I'm going to be talking about the underlying physiological processes behind plyometrics such as the mechanical model and the neurophysiological model um, to increase force reduction and power output. And I'm also going to talk about how you can enhance your own plyometric training to improve your force reduction and power output. Um, so plyometrics is fantastic. Um, I love the concept behind this stuff. I've loved reading about it, um, so I thought I'd share my interest on it. Um, plyometrics use this thing called a stretch shortening cycle. So it, it uses um, elastic stored energy and the stretch reflex to increase force reduction and power output. Now plyometrics is any form of jumping, bounding, hopping, skipping, that uses this uh, stretch shortening cycle such as elastic stored energy and that stretch reflex that I just spoke to you about. So what I want to talk about is first get your head around those concepts and how we can use those concepts to enhance training. Um, so the first one I want to talk about is muscle spindles um, using the stretch reflex. Um, but before I go into that is when you're doing a plyometric movement, okay, there's an eccentric component which is the lengthening of the muscle immortalization which is almost like the period between eccentric and concentric and then we got the concentric phase okay which is the shortening of the muscle now what happens is when we lengthen okay so if I'm going to squat down and jump right now so if you imagine squatting down and jumping up we'll just focus on the quadriceps for now my quadriceps are going to lengthen okay what's going to happen when those quadriceps lengthen okay is the muscle spindles are going to detect that length of change in the muscle okay what happens is those muscle spindles will then send a sensory uh, input to the spinal cord and increase force production and power output by commanding the agonist muscle to increase force production. Now, simplifying that, okay, I've done a diagram behind me which I'm going to explain and go through so you can see you can get your head around it. So this is mainly talking about the stretch reflex and uh, muscle spindles. Okay, so what we've got is, I'm sure you've done it with your friends, okay, when you're sitting down and you give your patellar tendon a whack and then suddenly you extend your leg, okay, your quadriceps uh, contract and you extend your leg. That is a stretch reflex. It is involuntary, it is a um, proprioceptive organs, the muscle spindles that cause this action, okay, and it's a protective mechanism in the body. So I've got the diagram here, so as you can see, we've given the patellar tendon a whack, which is inserted into the quadriceps. So when this quadricep text is going to lengthen, okay, so we've given that whack, the quadricep is going to lengthen, the muscle spindles are going to receive this input, okay? Muscle spindles will then send a sensory command to the spinal cord, okay, and that spinal cord will send a motor command to those quadricep to contract. That's the stretch, stretch reflex, okay? So there's a lengthen of the muscle, muscle spindles detect that change, depending on the severity of the length or the rate of length of change and send a command to the spinal cord to then increase force production and power output. Now, using this um, stretch reflex in plyometric is crucial. Okay, I always think about it when I'm doing my training. And the way I do that is increasing force production and power output using plyometrics is done by increasing the severity of length of change in the muscle. Okay. So if you can imagine this, now to explain this concept, I want you to do three exercises after you've done a warm up, whatever, before you say, during your session, okay, I want you to do three exercises. You can do them a couple of times each. The first one is just a static um, jump. So you're gonna squat down, hold the position, and you're gonna jump up as high as you can. Second one is a counter movement jump, squat jump, whatever you wanna call it. So you're just gonna stand, squat down, and jump up. Last one is a depth jump. So d dropping off, a, say, a height below your knee, dropping off and explode up as high as you can. Do those three exercises, measure the height, if you can tap on a wall, a bit of chalk, and see how high you get. Now, the first one, which is gonna be seated, I can guarantee it's gonna be your lowest one. Why? Because you're not using that stretch reflex, which I spoke about, that lengthening your muscle, because you're from a static position to enhance that force reduction and power output. The second one, you're gonna increase a bit of height, Okay, because you're using that stretch reflex, the length of the muscle change is going to be moderately severe, okay, not increased, um, but it's going to be a bit of change in the muscle length, which is going to increase force production and power output. Like I said, depending on the severity of the length of change of the muscle, the rate of change of muscle will determine how much force production and power output is um, provided to the agonist muscle. The last one is the depth jump. So 
So if you can imagine dropping off something and exploding straight up, there's going to be a greater pre-stretch. Okay, so that's going to cause a greater stretch in those muscles, which is going to provide a greater sensory input and force reduction and power output, which I spoke about. So do their three exercises, see how you go, let me know how you go. Um, and I'm pretty sure that the last one will be your greatest force reduction. So the way we can use this concept in our climb exercise training, whether it's skipping, bounding, jumping, box jumps, whatever it is, is we want to increase the efficiency to utilize this stretch shortening cycle. Okay, so the way we do that by using elastic stored energy and the stretch reflex that I spoke about is by decreasing the mortalization phase. So like I said, you've got the eccentric and the concentric phase. Between that is the time, is the mortalization phase. If I have a greater time, okay, mortalization, which is the ground contact time, think about it that. So if I was gonna jump off something, land and explode up, if that time is greater, that elastic stored energy is gonna dissipate as heat and they're not gonna get the effective power output and force production that I'm after and those muscle spindles in terms of force production is not gonna be as great. So what I wanna do is reduce the ground contact time, um, for example, and decrease that immortalization phase, okay? So what will happen is we're gonna efficiently use that stored energy in the tendons to increase force production, power output, and also those muscle spindles is gonna be increased stretch, okay? We're gonna increase that force production and power output as well. So we're gonna decrease that immortalization phase and, create that and make sure that ground contact time is nice and sharp. Okay, so the way we do that, um, there's many ways we can use this concept um, to increase power output. So the first way, well, all the way, um, is to make sure that when you're landing or when you're moving from concentric, uh, eccentric to concentric, is to be as quick as you can. Um, before you even do the exercise, uh, what I do if I'm gonna do a box jump, even just a box jump, you get some people who move from eccentric to concentric quite quickly, quite rapidly, and their power output's probably gonna be a bit greater. Um, but you get some people who are quite slow in transition, okay? So even myself, when I'm doing a box jump, for example, I'm thinking about how quickly can I move from eccentric to concentric? So when I explode down, explode back up, okay? So I wanna be as quick as I can to use that stretch reflex. Also, when you're doing it, um, Try and descend down rapidly. So this is just an example as a box jump. So when I descending down using eccentric, I'm gonna load up as quick as I can. Like I said, the quicker you stretch and the greater you stretch the muscle, the greater the force output and power production is gonna be. So if I was doing a counter movement jump, I was gonna squat down and jump, okay? I'm gonna jump, but it's not gonna be very high. If I'm gonna go for a max effort, quickly throw my arms down, explode down, explode out of there as quick as I can, you're gonna use that stretch reflex and enhance the power output and force production. So there's a couple of ways you can use this to improve your plyometrics training. Um, but I'll just say, just in, decrease that mortalization phase. Try and be as quick as you can from eccentric to concentric to use this stretch reflex. Um, it's an involuntary response, so you wanna be as quick as you can when you're doing it, whether you're using bounds, so if what I'm on diagonal bounds, I'm doing unilateral bounds, single leg bounds. That ground contact time, you're gonna be as quick as you can to enhance that stretch reflex and improve the stretch shortening cycle, which will improve your power output and force production. And that's what we're after. So when you're doing your plyometric training, think about this concept. Think about that stretch reflex when you whack your knee and you extend your leg, um, when you quadriceps to increase force production. And think about that when you're doing your plyometrics. So try and apply it to any session that you're doing. Um, and yeah, try and reduce the ground contact time and to increase force reduction and power output. If you have any questions um, about plyometrics, I know there's a bit of content in here. I try to simplify as much as I can. Um, give us an email and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. So hopefully you enjoyed the video and you can use some of these concepts to improve your training. Um, I'll speak to you next time. Enjoy.